Hello, everybody. So let me just check real quick, make sure we're live. Uh, so I'm going to be doing another MRE test. Uh, and I'll tell you, I should be doing um, testing of Sopaco low sodium. I actually bought a pallet of Sopaco low sodium at auction at auction and then it there all right we're live sorry about that so i'm doing my own audio video here and i'm not an expert so uh really quickly we're going to open up and i'll tell you a little story while this is warming up i have a bowl of hot water these don't have mre heaters inside these are humanitarian daily rations menu number four i bought these from a reputable seller and when they arrived the date was exactly what i was expecting so the eBay seller was very reputable. I unfortunately bought from a different auction house. We won't tell you which one, but I'm going to tell you the experience, and I'll really caution against buying pallets of MREs off auction websites because if something goes wrong, they're going to place the blame all on you and not on the seller for putting an uh, inaccurate description. So we'll show you what the description was, but real quick, I want to get this open and... Uh, warming up so we can test the entree. So this is humanitarian daily ration number four. So Paco, so far I've been very impressed with their food. Uh, Emery's kind of get a bad rep, but uh, I've been very Pete, please. <laughs> so if you know which menu this is, this is menu number four. There's A, B, and C. If you can leave in the comment which one you think this is. I have peas and tomato sauce is going to be one of the entrees. And I was really hesitant about peas and tomato sauce, but actually they turned out to be very good. So we don't have to worry here. Let's take it apart and let's see what our other entree is going to be. So the other entree, da 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 rice with vegetables. So we're going to be trying, I'll probably try the rice with vegetables because I've already tried the peas and tomato sauce. So here we have rice with vegetables and sorry about the video last time i realized my live stream uh everything was kind of uh very shaky and not great so i've tried to adjust the resolution on the camera see if that helps so what do you get in a humanitarian daily ration we have peas and tomato sauce in a very nice these are really nice packages very heavy plastic we have some peanut butter we have rice with vegetables. So we are going to put the rice with vegetables into the hot water. So these particular MREs do not come with heaters. So we're going to get that warming up right now. I boiled some water, put it in a pot. We have an oatmeal cookie. We have ever popular vegetable crackers. Oh, here we go. We have an unfrosted toaster pastry. And what's interesting is the low sodium ones come with pop tarts. Uh, maybe somebody can tell me, are these halal menus right here in the HDR? Uh, the outside of the box has what I would describe as like a crescent sun, or I should say like a crescent moon, maybe. Um, and so these are actually look like they manufacture themselves or some sort of a supplier. They're definitely not pop tarts. We have some strawberry jam. And let's see here. Was there only one strawberry jam? That's interesting. And we have a shortbread cookie. So we tried that last time. So let's go real quick. I'm going to have to do some... Uh, swapping a video here and i'll tell you what was the problem with buying um mres at an auction house that was not ebay and based on my experience so far i can't really recommend anything except ebay because the other auction house was a uh, in my personal opinion not a great experience so far and i've actually had to file a credit card dispute so let's see i need to move this up and let me minimize this 
buying pallets of emeries, and somehow I stumbled upon an auction house. I won't say which one. Uh, but here you can see this was the description. Pallet, 48 cases, 14 meals, 672 individual meals, low sodium, pictures represent each pallet. Meal contents will vary. Tells you the size of the pallet, the weight, and then again tells you the same information over again. So there is no indication about a date. So let me ask you, if you were looking at this description, would you think this was brand new food? Certainly from the description, certainly from the description, it shouldn't be over five years old, right? There's nothing in here that would tell you this is over five years old. But, you know, I still did my what I call my due diligence. I contacted the auction house. Uh, I sent them an email. Did not hear back. They're horrible customer service. So then I place a phone call and leave a message. Didn't hear anything back. I place a phone call, tell the person, I didn't hear back. I'd like to speak to somebody. So then they transfer me, I think it was called the asset department. I speak with a woman in the asset department, and she says to me, well, if I don't get back to you, that means I couldn't find anything out. Now, when you hear somebody say, if I don't get back to you, I'm not going to hear back from me. So, you know, there's good odds that I'm not going to do anything. So did she do anything? Did she not do anything? I don't know. So then uh, call, what happens? I, either I won the auction, and, and the problem is you don't know who you're buying from until you've actually won the auction. Are they reputable or are they not reputable? Who would know? So, uh, eventually I do speak with a woman named Angelica. And I think this is after the fact, right? Because she tells me she opened a case, she contacted the seller, seller not got, never got back to him. So let's stop right there. What should have happened right then, if you're an auction house, this is like you're selling a car and you haven't put the odometer reading in the listing. So you have buyers calling in and saying, hey, there's no odometer reading on this car. Now, what the auction house should have done immediately is they should have removed the auction from being able to take place. Auction should have never gone off, and they should have contacted the seller and said, your auction has been permanently suspended until you put in proper details. So what would be the most important things about buying a pallet of MREs? Well, they described half of what is the most important thing. They described the weight and the number of meals. But the next most important thing about food is how old is it? Especially MREs. MREs have a limited shelf life. From what I've looked at on Sopaco Weather findings, there was a government army agency that did testing on MREs stored at different temperatures over a different number of, of years. Or by, I should say months. They list months. And at ideal storage conditions is only five years. So, if the ideal... Now, what I'm going to assume is the Army testing opened up these packages and tested them for foodborne illness. That would be salmonella, E. coli, and probably botulism. And five years on that graph. So I'm going to think from the fact that they did testing, that meant after five years at 70 degrees storage, a certain number of the packages were tested and found to have foodborne illness. Six years, or seven years, or eight years. And if you look at the other listings, this one has almost no information. But there were other listings from the same seller. You could tell because it was out of the same warehouse location in Stockton. In the other listings, they recommend that the food must be stored in a climate-controlled warehouse. So the only way you actually get out to five years is if you've kept it in a climate-controlled warehouse where the temperature was 70 degrees or less the entire time. Now, anybody who knows about California knows about Stockton, California. Stockton, California gets incredibly hot. So when I got out to the warehouse, there was a huge roll-up door, and it was just open. So that means the warehouse couldn't be climate-controlled because they keep the warehouse door open, and it's an enormous door, basically allowing the outside temperature to become you know, whatever it stabilizes to. So Stockton, for example, during heat waves get, gets over 110. It was over 110 where I live, and I'm about 30, 40 miles away from them. And they're even hotter because they're Central Valley inland. And, you know, it gets hotter as you go to Central California. So if it was 110 here, it was 112, 115 in Stockton. And so we have several summers where we had massive heat waves, where it got up to like 112, 114 here, 
which means that it was at least that same temperature in Stockton, if not warmer, meaning they couldn't possibly have been storing it at 70 degrees or less. My garage, which I would call semi-climate controlled because I live in a condominium and I have uh, not our living space, but behind my the back of my garage is somebody's unit, basically. And of course, if they're running their air conditioning, I'm getting a little bit of bleed through the fact that the walls are not perfectly airtight. And my I'm on the first floor garage, and there's two pretty much in the shade most of the day. So my garage is almost a climate controlled, and it gets well over 80 degrees during summer. You know, mid-80s during hot summer days. So uh, I contacted the Well, why didn't you inspect the contents? And you can kind of see in the picture here, the contents are heavily wrapped in plastic. There was uh, no way to pull boxes out. They're heavily wrapped in plastic, and they have really thick plastic bands all over holding it all together. And on top of the pallet is a cardboard topper. And so if I pulled the entire pallet apart, when I drove it home in the van, it would have fallen all over the place while I drive. It's a very kind of windy road to get back to my house. So when something went wrong, instead of the auction house looking at the description and saying, wow, the seller did a horrible job of putting a description together and it doesn't match at all, they said to me, it's all your fault, Daniel. You should have pulled it apart. And what's funny is I looked at the bottom of the box, and the bottom of the box said 1022. And there was nothing to indicate that that was an expiration date. The other thing is, if you look at the other descriptions from the seller, it says, what did I say? Um, I lost my train of thought here. Sorry about that. Uh, and so the, the seller says there's only two dates on an MRE. There's a backed on date and an inspection date, and there's no expiration date. But if you look at the bottom of the box, and they say the inspection date is three years after the pack date, except the bottom of the box said uh, 922, which is five years after the pack date. So I couldn't discover the pack date until I actually opened a box and looked in an MRE. I was trying to take pictures. I was going to start selling them on eBay. And I look, it says seven and then like 263. Like, That's strange. What does that mean? And so I look up how to read an MRE date. That means they were made in 2017. Nowhere in this description would you think you're buying over five-year-old food, let alone the fact that in their other descriptions, they say it must be stored in a climate-controlled warehouse, which they didn't do. So anyway, it's really funny. And then so once I found out the name of the seller, uh, I sent them an email. They didn't respond. I call and leave a voicemail. They don't respond. I call again, and I ask the lady two questions. What is the pack date or what is the inspection date? I don't say anything about expiration date. So she goes away for a little bit, making me think she actually talked to somebody, probably the owner of the company. And the other really upsetting thing is that this other company, I'm not going to name them, but they claim to be a veteran-owned company. And if you claim to be a veteran-owned company, that means you're standing on the respect that you should give the military and that you're saying I an integrity that you'd expect from military. So I know the name of the company, but to say you're a milking like this, where you don't even list the fact that you're buying expired food, that's really disgusting in my personal opinion. So anyway, the lady comes back to me and says, the inspection date, she doesn't say expiration date. And of course, she wouldn't say expiration date, because if you look at up their other listings, they say there's only two dates on an Emory, and there is no expiration. There is the pack date and the inspection date. So she tells me, it's 9.22. So if I would have looked on the bottom of the box and seen 9.22, I wouldn't have thought anything. It's not until you go inside and figure out how to read an MRE code that you figure out they were made in 2017. So she was untruthful. I want to use a stronger word, but I won't. Uh, she was untruthful and told me 9.22, when the actual inspection date would have been 9.20 if they were made in 2017. So they were untruthful by two years. Uh, so I thought there was still at least two years of useful life of storing these. I could eat them, sell them, and in two years, I should be able to get rid of all of them or eat them uh, by doing reviews. So that's why, in my personal opinion, I could never recommend any auction house other than, let's say, eBay, because eBay carries themselves with a lot of integrity. So anyway, 
that's my little rant for today. But I think you can see from that description, there was absolutely no indication that those were expired five-year-old food. And then when something went wrong, the auction house blamed it all on me and put no, no problems on the seller, which, in my personal opinion, is pretty disgusting. So anyway, that's where we're at. I think we've had this uh, warm up long enough now that with my little rant. So we'll set this aside and we'll go right for the main entree which is the rice with vegetables. I'm looking forward to this. Sounds healthy. Sounds good. So here we have, uh, I wanted to talk about these two. I see a lot of reviewers will use a metal uh, kind of a cafeteria tray. Uh, I found these. These are sold by Walmart. Uh, these are, <laughs> you're going to laugh, they're actually electrical burner covers for a stove. Uh, however, they're made out of stainless steel. And like I said before, I had a set of these a long time ago. I take to reggae on the river and other music festivals. So they may have slightly cheapened the plate um, between when I bought it like three years ago. But it is still substantially stronger than even four or five paper plates put together. So these make very good camping plates. You could even, if you wanted to be super efficient, you could, you could make a set of plates out of this. Um, Stainless steel, and very strong, better than paper plates. So, let's see. I think we'll use the large one here. And, of course, you get a packet here with napkins, wet nap, uh, spoon, but we'll save that for later. I have my handy-dandy spoon here for my sampling. And let's burn my fingers, grabbing this out of the water. Feels pretty warm. That was quite a rant I went on, so I'm hoping it's ready. So yeah, I couldn't believe that. It's like, as an auction house, if there's a discrepancy in the description, I'm going to have to cut this. You know, let me get uh, my food scissors so I can wash them. All right, I'm going to use some food scissors so that I can take it apart and wash it when I'm done. Because I'll probably get some seepage off the package. So let's give this a little extra slice and let's see how it cuts now. So I couldn't really tell if that um, made a hiss. So, nice odor. Maybe doesn't look, you know, because it's been compressed in a pouch. But has a nice smell to it. Let's get all that good stuff on the plate here. All right. So, of course... It looks like it came out of a pouch, so we're going to kind of clean it up a little bit. But you can see nice bits of rice in there. So we're going to kind of mash it up a little bit to make it look a little bit more like an entree. And see, that's turning into something that looks like food almost instantly. So if you care about visual appeal, I would recommend you break it up into nice little bits. Looks very nice. Nice pieces of rice in there. Let's give it another sniff test. Yeah, that smells very nice. I can't complain at all. Let's get the focus going there. So let's try our first uh, little spoon bit here. Hold on. Hmm. Very nice flavor. Rice is a nice consistency. It's not mushy. Yeah, that's very good. Let's take a look. Looks like maybe it might be a lentil. See if I can dissect anything else out of here. I'm not the biggest food expert here, but 
The taste is nice. It has a very nice flavor. Yep, there's lentils in there. And nice pieces of rice. The rice is done so it's not a mush mess in your mouth. That's nice. Let's go back for spoon two. Mm. Has a nice mouth feel. Nice consistency. I'm a real big person on how something feels chewing in your mouth. Um, and if it doesn't have a nice texture in your mouth, it's a big part of the food to me. So that has a very nice texture. I really like the fact that the rice has not been turned into a mushy mess. You might have expected that if it had been sitting in a pouch for a period of time. Or that there would be a possibility that it's overcooked, but it's definitely not overcooked at all. It has a real nice flavor. The lentils have a nice consistency. Let's see if I can pick one of those out. Hmm. I don't think that was a lentil. I think it was something else. Let's see. Here we go. Get this guy by itself. So the skin is still firm, but it's cooked all the way through. Yeah, this is really nice. I mean, considering, uh, I think he's had an inspection date of 1022, so we're looking at slightly over three-year-old MREs here. And these are still, by, per the manufacturer, recommended to have at least two more years of life. And they're, it's delicious. So if you were to put some nice garnish on this and do a blind taste test, and have fresh made and have this nicely warmed up and, and broken up so you couldn't tell it was from the pouch. I think you'd be hard pressed to say that you weren't, eat, you'd be maybe not able to guess which one came out of a pouch and which one was freshly made. Hmm. Yeah, it's really nice. Hmm. All right. I don't have anything bad to say about that. I'm really impressed that the rice is not overcooked. The vegetable, I think these are um, lentils, um, are still have a little firmness to them, to the skin, and then you bite into them and then it yields like it should. It has a nice spice mixture. I have some Papa's Perfect, I think they give you inside of that. But I think it has a nice flavor if you were just eating this plain. Um, I'm going to let this cool down a little bit uh, to get down to where it would be similar to if you just opened a pouch and ate it with no uh, no heating to see how it tastes cold. And we will come back to this. So we will keep the show rolling. Let's see. So we're going to save the peas and tomatoes for a later time. Um, let's see. What do you think we want to have here? Hmm. We can have a toaster pastry. Why don't we have some vegetable crackers and some strawberry jam? That sounds pretty good to me. So let's get ourselves a smaller tray. Shortbread cookie. So here are vegetable crackers. It's really hard to read the nutritional information with the foil packet. So I'm going to open this up and let's see if we can hear uh, a hiss. Ah, these are hard to get into. Oh, I don't know if you heard that, but there was definitely a vacuum hiss. So still good vacuum on the vegetable crackers. I think from here, now that we know that the the packaging was intact, I'm going to cut it with scissors. Because last time, 
when I took these out of the package, I kind of think I um, messed them up a little bit and broke them. So I'm going to cut these nicely and let's see how they come out of the package without trying to disturb it too much. So I'm going to say, even though these were sitting in a case for three years and who knows if they were jostled about or not, and I'll tell you when I opened up the case, uh, nine of them were very nicely laid in and packed and it looks like the 10th one was really kind of shoved in there. So that's why I opened uh, that was the last one I opened, and then I don't think the crackers were broken in that at all. So these look very good. They will probably break while I pull them out. So it looks like just that little bit there broke off, but honestly, that's where I cut. So I might have put so much pressure that that's what actually broke it. So really impressed with how well these hold up in a vacuum pack, and then they were tightly packed into a box. And these had been sitting for three years. So fairly impressed the fact that these are not just like crumbs. So we will open our strawberry jam. I love strawberry jam. This is going to be a treat. I'll tell you. This is some serious packaging. <laughs> I'm having trouble opening this thing. All right, so I think I have it open enough. Let me maybe we'll cut off the uh, little corner here. All right, so first we're going to give it a sniff test because that's really important. Uh, let's set this aside. Let's give it a little sniff test. Very nice strawberry smell. So, it looks fairly thick, and I imagine they do that probably to limit the uh, water content so it will last longer. So let's put that on a cracker. So, uh, looking at the video, this is coming out much darker on video. It's a much lighter color in real life. Let's see if I can... Yeah, it's coming out looking very dark in the video, but it's not that dark actually looking at it uh, right in front of me. So let's give that a test. It's nice. <laughs> Strawberry jelly and crackers. So the crackers have a very nice snap to them. They are very, very crunchy. So the packaging holds up very well. Uh, it's not mold. I should say, well, it's definitely not moldy, but it's not um, not stale at all. Um, you'd be really hard pressed, like I said, if you blindfolded yourself and you had a package of crackers you took off the shelf at a store and had these on a plate as well. I don't think you'd be able to tell the difference. They are very, very crispy. They make a nice snap. They crunch in the mouth. So, we're looking pretty good. So the only thing I'll say is the camera is not really doing justice on their actual color. They're uh, very deep red, but not as dark as what I'm seeing in the screen here. Those are nice. No complaints. So last time. I had tried just a tiny bit of peanut butter. Um, maybe I'll try a little bit more. So if you look up uh, shelf life of peanut butter, usually it can stay, I think, for two years. And this is not, not natural peanut butter. I'm talking about like a, a Jif or a Skippy that is um, has some preservatives. 
And I'll tell you, when I was a kid, uh, we were, what would you call it? Call it house poor. Meaning we lived in a relatively nice house, but we were poor. Lots of peanut butter sandwiches and macaroni and cheese and eggs and uh, you know, a lot of very simple meals when I was a kid. Uh, I would describe us as house poor, meaning we had a house, but all the money and resources were spent on the house and there was not a lot of extra after that. So we would get these number 10 cans of Jif peanut butter. And they would not be refrigerated. We would just keep them in the pantry. And a number 10 can, enormous, it's an enormous amount of peanut butter. And we would literally just scoop into it. And I think what would happen is, you know, the top layer is the only part that's exposed to oxygen. And then everything underneath is basically hermetically sealed under a layer of peanut butter. And so every time you dug into it, you were digging out relatively fresh peanut butter. And I want to say it took us at least two or three years to go through a number 10 can all the way down to the bottom. Uh, certainly well over a year. It's hard to, you know, you're remembering as a kid, it's hard to say. But I, we left that in the pantry for so long. So I think I'm going to be okay eating this three-year-old peanut butter that's been in a shrink-wrapped, uh, heavy package that's vacuum-packed. So what I will do is I'm going to take a hefty spoonful of this. I don't want to go too crazy because if something happened and went wrong, I believe salmonella would be the thing that would contaminate peanut butter if it had been sitting for way, way too long. And three years is uh, kind of right at the shelf life of your standard Jif or Skippy of what they recommend inside of a pantry. So I'm going to open this up and uh, take a healthy spoonful of it. Uh, in my next video, I'll let you know if I had any stomach issues. They use some really high quality packaging. That is really thick. So let's see if we can spread this out nicely in front of you. Ah! <laughs> Problem of live video. Oh, well. All right. So we're going to. I should have. I bet a knife would be really helpful right about now, right? So there we have a nice, healthy slab of peanut butter here. This was packed, our inspection date, 1022. So we're looking at a 2019 uh, manufacturer date. Let's see if we can refocus that. So looks very much like smooth peanut butter. Uh, let's give it a shot. That's smooth peanut butter. I can't taste it at all. That's been sitting in a pouch here for three years now. So that's pretty good. So at inspection date of 1022, that's uh, three years of life. They should have uh, a good another two years of safe eating. And then anything beyond that, you know, you're kind of uh, potentially taking a risk. So I think... We will give that one more shot, and I will genuinely tell you whether I have any stomach issues or not. Hopefully, I'm going to. I'm just going to eat a tiny bit so that if there were something wrong, I should be okay and just have a slightly sore stomach and not be like to the hospital. So it looks very good, kind of like a thick, um, creamy peanut butter. Yeah, real nice peanut butter flavor. I'm not sure what company they get their peanut butter from, or if they make it themselves. But very good. No complaints. So I'm going to polish off the rest of that jelly as soon as we are done with the filming here. The jelly is very good. Uh, I love strawberry jelly. Nothing wrong. <laughs> I haven't met a strawberry jelly I didn't love. So... Let's see, do we want shortbread or oatmeal? Maybe we'll shave the shortbread for the kids. Ooh, you know what? Hold on. I want the toaster pastry. So we have unfrosted toaster pastry. And um, 
if you get the low sodium ones, it's going to be something like a um, pop tart. But these are a real nice treat. They actually look like they either make it themselves or it's a different company. Wow. Not not um, whoever makes pop tarts. I think it's Kellogg's. So let's see if we can hear a vacuum on this or not. So I don't know that I could hear a vacuum on unsealing of that or not. If it was, it was uh, covered up by the sound of the wrapper. So again, I'm going to use some scissors so that I don't destroy it taking it out. Stuff is flying everywhere. All right. So I think most of the damage I did that was taking it out of the package. That's what you're going to get. See the brown sugar uh, bleeding through the holes there. Filling looks like. Let's give it a taste test. Real nice. I'm probably supposed to heat that up, but it's very good for just cold out of the package. Nice amount of cinnamon that hits you. Looks very fresh. No signs of anything growing on it. Yeah, that's good. All right. So maybe we'll make some shorts out of the uh, oatmeal cookie and shortbread. So we'll save that for later. Don't want to have too long of a stream here, just listening to me eat the whole time. But so far, everything I've had from Sopaco is very good. Um, I have tried a low sodium. Uh, I've got two cases of this HDR. Maybe somebody can tell me if they think it is a halal HDR. Uh, the outside of the packaging has what I describe as like a crescent moon on the outside of the packaging. So if you can leave in the comments, is that what the vegetarian packaging looks like? Or are these something completely different that are specially made? Um, so far, all of these uh, these menus appear to be vegetarian, which is leading me to believe that maybe they're halal as well. Um, so anyway, if you can let me know in the comments. Uh, so very disappointed. I was supposed to. I was really looking forward to doing a whole bunch of testing with the uh, MREs from Sopaco. I went out to Stockton, uh, unloaded forty eight boxes of stuff into my garage. I went starving, so I ate one meal. So I only got a chance to eat one low-sodium meal. Uh, it was good. It was a ravioli, I believe. And everything inside uh, seemed okay. Um, but like I said, it's at the pretty much almost five and a half year mark already. And I was a little bit upset after the fact finding that out. Um, I know people have eaten many, many... Uh, Readiness Rations has some really good um, reviews. So if you want to watch Readiness Rations, you'll find some very entertaining MRE reviews from him. And also, if you're into old collectible uh, firearms, he has a lot of interesting videos about uh, collectible firearms, which was kind of interesting to see. So, so Paco is a good company. Make good stuff. I'm a little disappointed at the auction company. And people who are selling on the auction company because it was five and over five year old food. So, a uh, little would rather not be stuck with five year old food that I thought was either brand new or if the lady would have been honest with me, it still would have had at least a good another two years of eating left on it. But now it is at its maximum shelf life. And every one you eat out of there is potentially rolling the dice with getting some stomach issues and maybe even serious, serious issues that would take you to the hospital. 
but I, I was a manager at Kentucky Fried Chicken, and they had a very good program. Uh, it was an original Kentucky Fried Chicken store that was owned by, it's not actually the colonel, there's a guy named Pete Harmon who owned a diner, and the colonel came in one day, and the colonel was actually like a door-to-door -door fryer salesman. And the way he would sell his deep fryers is he'd make the people some fried chicken. And so this guy, Pete Harmon, a diner, and liked the chicken so much, he said, well, I don't really care about your fryers, but I love your chicken. And that's where Kentucky Fried Chicken actually came from. And Pete Harmon was a fantastic man. Uh, he must have been 60, 70 years old. So we were all like not even assistant managers. We were just shift managers. And the man had gone to the trouble to come out to a manager picnic. So I thought that was really classy. And if you worked at a Pete Harmon store, you got not only excellent management training, but you got extensive foodborne illness training because they took that very seriously. And so we had to watch a great many videos about salmonella, E. coli, and botulism. And it's not something you want to play around with. So... I take that seriously. If the Sopaco says they're good for five years and anything past that, you're rolling the dice, then you should take that seriously. So my next plan might be um, I have filed a credit card dispute and the credit card company, upon hearing the details, very much agreed with me that I was within my rights to file a complaint. And so over the next couple months that I'll send them off paperwork about what happened. And hopefully I'll get my money back and these auction people can come pick up their expired food out of my garage. And I'm uh, doing some research about potentially buying a case of actually fresh MREs from Sopaco directly. Um, so I'm kind of looking at the pricing there and seeing if I can do that or not. It is certainly more expensive. Um, but considering they're brand new, they're not that much more expensive. So... I have this uh, pallet of old food they sold me through the auction house that is at its end of its shelf life, and you're rolling the dice if you eat each meal, or I can pay a little bit more and get food that is going to be good for at least five more years, and I'll actually know what kind of a warehousing condition it was stored in. That was the other thing that was hilarious, is that they listed in their climate-controlled environment, and then you go out to their warehouse and it's not climate-controlled at all. So anyway, I will give you more updates about what was the resolution of the credit card dispute and uh, how the auction house handled it, um, whether or not I'm going to give the names of the auction house and the seller who is the veteran-owned bills business. I might just go ahead and just say as a warning in my personal opinion, you need to be really careful about buying anything from an online auction that is not eBay eBay has a guarantee on everything, whereas this company basically blamed me for the fact that the seller was dishonest in their listing. So that's the difference between eBay and other auction houses. So I think we'll wrap it up right there. Everybody have a fantastic weekend. Uh, really impressed with the Sopaco MREs. Uh, I could see if you had to eat these week on end, and as long as you had a slightly different variety of menu, I don't see any reason. Oh, you know what we're going to do before we cut off here? We now have our rice dish that should be at room temperature. And let's do one last taste test. If you had to eat these cold and couldn't possibly heat them up, how do they taste? That's still very edible. Yeah. If you had to eat these cold, you could do it. They're pretty tasty, even cold. Yeah. So if you were stuck completely without power, you had a massive earthquake and the water mains were broken in your town and the electricity was shut off and it was going to be two or three weeks before the city could get around to fixing all the water main breaks and all the places where the electrical poles had been damaged. I could definitely see spending a few weeks eating just nothing but MREs if we had to. So I'm pretty sure if you had a garage full of MREs, then you'd guarantee that nothing ever would go wrong in the world. 
And so, and if anything did, you'd have plenty of food. Uh, you got a family and kind of gives you a warm, fuzzy feeling to know you have a little emergency food in the garage in case, um, for whatever reason, you couldn't go to a supermarket or your utility services were shut down. We live in California, so we don't really have huge snow issues, but at least where I live, uh, we did get an incredible amount of heavy rain, and that easily could have put our power out. There was plenty plenty of communities around me who had no power at all for a couple days. Um, so yeah, I think it's not a bad idea, especially after uh, what we've seen with COVID, that the world uh, supply chains are fragile. And there are any number of events that could occur that would cause the supermarkets to be either not a place where you'd want to go or completely non-functional. So, very happy. So, Paco is good stuff. I have not been disappointed with anything I've eaten yet. And so, we will continue doing So Paco taste testing on the different menus. Uh, so, this was peas and tomatoes and vegetables with rice. You can leave in the comments. I know it was menu four, but I don't know if that was A, B, or C. So if you can add that and let me know, was I a menu A, B, or C that we ate? Everybody have a good weekend, and thank you very much. I want to say uh, really thank you very much to all of my customers. I really appreciate uh, you taking the time to buy from me. Um, it's been a very positive experience. Uh, the whole company kind of started out of frustration of um, I worked for a company, and it was a kind of a engineering legal industry company. And there were events going on that caused all of the good engineers to leave the company. I shouldn't say all the good engineers, but all the good engineers who were upwardly mobile and were able to easily leave the company left. And I found myself, uh, basically I was a secretary, but I was going out on site inspections as if I was a certified engineer. Yeah. I was collecting data that was going to be used, supposed to be for just a short period of time. It got to be one month, two months, three months. And starting at three months, I started sending messages to my boss saying, hey, this is fantastic. Looks like I've gotten a huge promotion here. And he didn't reply, didn't reply. And I finally cornered him in his office one day after, this is now after six months of being a full-time engineer, basically. Um, and was told, you can't do what we do. So I didn't. And I took that frustration and I started a company. So I was working a side business while working my 40 hour business, regular business. And then I hurt my back and was fired. <laughs> hurt my back, had a couple MREs. I had a bunch of doctor reports. Um, had MREs are incredible technology. You can literally see my nerves being squeezed off by pieces of the stuff out of my back, out of my discs. Uh, and my boss refused to look at it, basically called me a liar, said I made a bad moral decision by um, filing the uh, complaint with, oh, it wasn't a complaint, it was a standard, you know, workers comp. I had uh, two MREs, two spine specialists uh, signing off that I really could probably do with some surgery. Um, but instead I found uh, electrical stimulation and uh, used electrical stem to fix my back up. Good enough. I'll tell you, it was a weird story. Uh, two different people I randomly ran into, or I should say I ran into one person who had had back surgery. They were walking into the back surgery, and they rolled out in a wheelchair. Then I told that story to my sister as to why I didn't want to do surgery, and she said she was having some problems um, and was at a physical therapy, and there was a person in a wheelchair there, and she talked and asked what happened. And that was the second person who walked into a back surgery and rolled out on a wheelchair permanently. So when life tells you, you know what, Dan, you're going to walk into your surgery and you're going to potentially roll out in a wheelchair, I, I listened. So I'm very fortunate. Some days are good, some days are bad, but I can still walk. And I'd rather be walking in pain than being put into a wheelchair by a botched back surgery. And both spine surgeons said it would be a challenging surgery that would take many hours. And that my particular way my back was herniated, it was not a typical herniation, meaning they would have to really go digging around my back. And that's not the kind of thing you want to hear when you have delicate nerves that if they get even scraped, you're in a wheelchair. So 
that's a part of my story I haven't really gone into, but I really want to thank my customers very much. Um, this has become my sole method of supporting myself. Uh, I had tried getting a job later with an accountant, was very, very honest about what had happened with my back. And so the guy was switching offices and he knew I had a horrible back. And he said, so you can move all the desks to the other new office? I said, no. Did you miss the completely the part about where I told you where my back is destroyed? And then um, still stuck me with uh, doing, in addition to being doing the engineering stuff, I have a computer information system and telecommunication degree. And even though I was getting paid as a secretary, uh, often got used as computer support. And so I ended up, the guy had me transfer all the computers to the other room. So anyway, it didn't work out well at all. And it was a very strange accounting office where I spent half the day uh, basically handing paperwork back to customers who were not being served and not getting their taxes done, which was really uncomfortable to have really, really angry people come in who are not getting their taxes done on time. And it just was a bad situation. I was afraid that one of them was going to come in and get violent because the biggest way to make somebody go violent is to mess with their money. And that's what was basically happening at this accounting firm was he was taking on way too many work uh, customers and then not doing their taxes. <laughs> so that's the best way I'd describe it. So anyway, thank you. Uh, really be 